I'm the King's College. Back in 2004, 2005, I started an innovative house system to help build community. There was just one problem. Where would we put all of those angry, bitter Christian feminists? <laughs> and that's when the idea for the House of Susan B. Anthony was born. <laughs> we put all of those man-hating ladies into a hotbed of anger and estrogen, and the rest is history. Actually, that's not what happened. I'm Kelly O'Donnell in the House of Susan B. Anthony, and I'd like to set the record straight. So, see, since our founding, we've had individual personalities with minds of our own, which has led this stigma that we're just a bunch of man-haters. But we're really not. Huh. Um, I've heard it rumored that you all were so independent, you nearly had to break it up completely. Yeah, the first few years were a little rough. But under a resurrected exec team led by our first president, Jen I. Talkington, we poured life into the house. We became a group of authentic individuals kindling life through purposeful relationships. And our founders blessed us with the motto, Esse quam videri, to be rather than to seem. Oh, to be a Christian feminist, judge, not just seem like one? <laughs> no to help each other become the best possible versions of ourselves, even when we don't look anything alike. Our house has had three distinct generations, signified by the peacock feather, the red scarf, and the pearl necklace. Each generation has had its unique qualities and memories, but it's been authenticity that has bound us all together. Word on the street is, back in the day, you all were just a bunch of dumb, ditzy man-haters. What? Uh, you at least sounded like it. Oh, you're talking about the SBA voice. Well, despite the nasally uh, whiny characteristics, it actually became a, a character, it became a signature joke of ours and a bunch of ours like me, Lauren Hall. Seriously, our first generation was signified by the peacock feather. Bright, bold, fun, unexpected, and beautiful all together. Uh, you know that peacock feathers come from boy peacocks, right? I'm confused. Is the issue that we hate men or that we're just too manly for kings? Oh, pick your poison. I've heard it both ways. Well, we're just glad we even have a house in the first place. That's why it's so significant that our founding color is maroon. It means patience in battle and ultimate victory but it was authenticity that bound us all together at first. It really did help turn our house around, Kelly. I remember those uh, years, they were a lot of fun. And um, our first president, Jenai Talkington, she was a free spirit and dreamer. And then we had uh, our two-term president, uh, Erica Umberger, and she helped to refine the multi-person exec team, while our uh, SBA legends, uh, Amanda uh, Reddy and, uh, Ali Rudder, um, helped to bring up a vivacious life's uh, house spirit in us. But um, these, this fun and unity that we had went hand in hand and uh, really helped us. Uh, during the school year 2005-2006, we won both drama competitions and we continued to do well throughout up until up through 2007 when we made a splash in our spoof of Churchill's infamous milk drama. There you go again, always mocking the boy houses. Is it to cover for your sad lack of domestic skills? Excuse me? We make award-winning pumpkin muffins, thank you. And in addition to our pumpkin muffins, Lauren Hall the first had one-on-ones with each house member. This was before it became common practice and everyone did it. And the SBA went on SBA adventures with Caitlin Miller throughout the city, and we sang our Super Susie song proudly. The S is for super! We had four advisors within our house history. We had Anna Peters, who was our first, then it followed with Kim Collins, and then Paula Thigpen, who's our registrar. But when she moved away, we went a year without a faculty advisor. That's when debate coach Katie Tubal st uh, stood up and continued the influence of words. We also had some pretty cool initiations. For instance, mi wearing mismatch during fashion week or waking up at the crack of dawn and hearing Miranda 
Brandt give a speech of Susan B. Anthony's in the middle of Herald Square subway station? Our second generation was signified by the signature red scarf and the understated black dress. Susan B. herself wore the signature red scarf when she gave her speeches. And these classic looks were brought by the three scholars who turned into presidents and then changed their names. We have Amber Rummel Hartlap, Emily Miller Schatz, and Annie Jane Clark. <laughs> Wait a second, Emily Miller, didn't she lead forums on manliness? Does the B in SBA stand for butch? More like Broadwell, but nice try. And this next generation was really intact with their intellectual life. Emily Schatz had the insight into anticipate the Mansfield debate. And she led a reading group with Dr. Corbin. And we had a really influ if influential Women of Influence speaker series where- uh, Do you mean the Women of World Domination series? No, we discovered what it was, what it was like to be a woman in the city through a multifaceted city engagement program. Um, is this because you couldn't actually be engaged in the city? As the recently maligned Emily Schatz, I would like to point out that we have a pretty decent track record with engagements and marriages. Thanks. <laughs> Awkward. Later, we started hosting senior thesis forums where both women and men could present about the results of their semester-long research projects. Oh, don't try to turn this into some sort of a brain fest. I know they burned bras. No. Yes, that happened. <laughs> Twice. Oh. <laughs> we thought of it as ironic self-awareness, but it really was a brain fest in a lot of ways. The quill and inkwell in our house crest symbolize both the writings of Susan B. Anthony and the influence that SBA women had on the college. Like who? Well, Debs Francisco ran the student voice. Kristen Rudolph helped to found the debate society. Allie Gabriel ran the Artisans Guild, which was later revived by Amanda Burgess. Half of the house was in the King's Dancers, and Corinne Cordasco started the King's College Theater. If that weren't enough, we also had Amber Rummelhart and Jane Clark, regulation geniuses. <laughs> Not to mention, Chris Ross, a man of Lewis and a friend of the house, called us conservatively provocative, a fitting description <laughs> for our house. Um, does that mean you wear leggings as pants? <laughs> no, conservatively provocative, Kings. We don't need to reveal everything. Which is probably why this generation had such great secrets come out of it. We had the soapbox, the revolution, the box. We'd like to tell you more, but then... Oh, what, you'd have to treat us like men and eat us or something? <laughs> The only Amazon Kings knows is the online bookstore. And we don't eat men. We eat with them. We kick off every fall with an ice cream social with Churchill, and we make muffins with Lewis and watch murder mysteries. Hmm. I'm skeptical. The white in our house crest stands for peace and serenity, which has been evident in times of crisis. Another unity crisis took place in 2009-2010 when almost no one showed up for House nominations. That was tense. But we worked it out with a massive heart-to-heart -heart with the exec team. Walks late night over the Brooklyn Bridge and a very impressive team effort during an interregnum. We needed peace and serenity again when we lost five of our key House members, Ariana, Corinne, Katie, Adrian, and Hannah, to the House of Ten Boom. I'm sure they were just glad to be allowed to like boys again. We like men, and we like giving them a run for their money at Interregnum. Last year, we were the first women's house ever to win the most respected house competition. And that brings us here. Our current era is symbolized by pearls. No two pearls are identical, but they match each other beautifully in a necklace. We've returned to our roots as a house that connects with organic fun bonding over YouTube videos and our amazing cooking skills. Gotta put some lip balm on these crusty crusts I got. <laughs> Gonna go meet Peter at the park. Uh, Peter better run. <laughs> Girl, that's cute, but we need to focus. <laughs> In our current years, under the leadership of Alexandra Harrison, they have been characterized by the hope and joy in the sink foils and the strategy and watchfulness in the Cornish Crow, which 
last time we did this competition, Liz Shute said that if you squint hard enough at the crow on our crest, it kind of looks like Susan B. herself. <laughs> but in these current years of Cornish crows and sink foils, we are hoping that our strategy will lead us to reclaim our title as interregnum cup winners. They think it over. But, but it, it ain't, ain't over. over. <laughs> we live uh, an authentic life. We live for authenticity, individuality, life, purpose, and relationships. Yes, it has been rumored that SBA stands for super badass. So, if our natural awesomeness makes you cower in fear, so be it. But we'll continue to be what we are. S.A. Quam Videri. To be rather than to seem. Thank you, and good night.